Today we have a very British classic, it's the scone. Or should I say the scone? I guess that depends on where you come from. Let me know which you think is the right way of saying it down in the comments below. Anyway, it's Isaac and welcome back to the channel. It's a simple recipe, so let's get started. Now, unlike other types of tea cakes, scones rely on baking powder instead of yeast to rise. So we'll start off by sifting some self-raising flour in the mixing bowl along with some salt, sugar and baking powder. Self-raising flour already has some baking powder in it, but it's not enough by itself, so we'll need to add a little bit more into the mix. Don't worry if you don't have self-raising flour, you can use plain flour too, but just with a little bit more baking powder instead. I'll leave both versions of the recipe down in the description box below. Next, we want to incorporate the butter, and just like short cross pastry, we want the butter to be cold. This is super important because you don't want the butter melting into the flour. Using your fingertips, gently pinch and rub the butter into the flour until you get a fine crumb. You can do this with a food processor as well, but since I'm going for the classic recipe and don't want to be doing a lot of washing up, I'll be sticking with my hands. Once you have a nice crumb-like consistency, we are ready to turn this into a dough. Slowly pour the milk in a bit at a time and loosely combine together with a fork. You may not need to use all the milk at once, just stop once it has loosely come together just like this. Dust the surface with some flour and transfer the dough over. Fold it over itself two to three times and shape it into a ball just like this. Notice how I'm not really kneading or stretching the dough, because we don't want to overdevelop the gluten and have a really tough scone. And we're almost there. Roll the dough out into a sheet about two to three centimeters thick and cut into little circles with about five centimeters in diameter. Feel free to vary the size a little bit. As long as the thickness is the same, they should cook at the same speed. So before we throw these into the oven, I wanted to give Rita the foodie a quick shout out for sharing this simple yet delicious recipe. Her Insta and blog are full of gems just like this recipe, so do check her out. I'll leave the links and everything in the description box below. Right, back to the scones. This is an optional step, but I'm also going to give the top a bit of an egg wash using the leftover milk and an egg. This will give it a nice golden brown finish, but make sure you don't get any down the sides as this will affect the rise. Transfer these into a lined baking tray and bake at 200 degrees Celsius or 395 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. One thing I love to do is to watch these rise in the oven. These will double up in size and look gorgeous just like this. Give them some time to cool before digging in. These are an absolute treat when paired with some jam and some clotted cream. Ah, oh, can't beat that classic combination. So, what do you think? Did I do Rita's recipe justice? And more importantly, is it scones or is it scones? Alright, that is it for today. I hope you are staying well and I'll catch you in the next one. 